Hello everyone, this is Dr. Henchman and welcome back to Zedcraft. So we're at my melon and pumpkin uh, farm today, uh, the community one that I've built in the farming district. Um, and I want to make some improvements to it. So I'll have a quick, I'll show you quickly inside um, on what the current state of things are. So um, like I mentioned last episode, I, I added on an additional layer uh, between episodes um, off camera. And uh, even with the additional layers, I believe two additional layers that I added, it's just not enough. Uh, with Hong Kong's now opened, uh, melon and pumpkin um, are in uh, are a hot commodity and, and people really want to use them for trading um, and this this farm just can't keep up with the demand um, so my plan is to um, not not to build up any further um, into the sky but actually to dig out all the way down to bedrock um, I'll, I'll probably rip out a lot of this redstone and probably even redo uh, these layers here um, uh, but yeah, the idea is to to rip it out, make it a little bit more compact, um, rethink how I've wired up the redstone, um, and build as many layers as I can. I believe I can fit about 12 to 14 layers if I go down to bedrock. Uh, so hopefully that those you know, additional layers will help um, with the demand. Uh, but before I get to that, um, I wanted to just take a... a a little bit of time to explain um, how how growth of, of crops works in Minecraft, um, and you know as a result why the 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 farm is designed the way that it is, um, and then after that uh, we'll dig the area out and then build up some some of these new modules. All right. We're in my creative uh, redstone world uh, at the moment, and I've set up some examples to help explain how crop growth works. Now, uh, although we're dealing with melon and pumpkins, uh, there's there's many uh, crops that adhere to these same rules. So we've got the, the melon pumpkin seeds, which, which produce melon and pumpkin. Uh, we've got regular seeds, which pr produce wheat, beetroot seeds, which produce beetroot and carrots and potatoes which produce themselves. All of these crops um, use the same algorithm uh, to determine it and they have the same rules about growth rates and uh, what determines the optimal growth rates. Now um, the game decides uh, to grow a crop based on what's called a random um, random tick. Uh, this is a part of the code um, which uh, allows for things to happen randomly in the world um, like growth or um, uh, other things of that nature um, and the way that it works is and the way that the speed that it's um, that happens is based on the random tick speed rule uh, which is a number and it's normally set to three um, and what this number is is um, per tick which is per cycle of um, of Minecraft um, per, for each loaded sub chunk. So uh, for a chunk that is loaded, and if I bring up the, the chunk borders, so we are in a chunk right now, so it's 16 by 16. A sub chunk is, uh, is a 16 by 16 by 16 um, uh, cube uh, within that chunk. So, you know, there's and you can see them outlined by the blue here. So this is a sub chunk. So per sub chunk of loaded chunks, uh, this uh, per tick, it chooses three random blocks and it randomly ticks them. And if that block is a, a block which requires random ticking, um, like a crop, it will do the action that that block specifies, in which case a crop, it grows. So that's the first rule that um, has to happen for growth. Um, but there are other rules. So light levels. So we need a light level above, uh, for of nine or above. Uh, so you can see that this, uh, this uh, uh, stem will not grow a pumpkin. It doesn't matter how long you wait, it will not grow a pumpkin there because... Uh, it, if you have a look at uh, the the light level, you'll see that it's nine, and so and by nine it, it means uh, the 
uh, sorry, it's below nine. So we've got nine there. So it's actually eight on the block. Um, and uh, it's actually not the block itself, not the stem, but it's the one above it that it checks. So it checks, uh, is the block above this stem, light level nine or above? So if we come down to the next one, you can see that we do have a light, we have a light above it, and it it is uh, nine or above, so it will grow a, a plant. Um, so the next thing to determine how quickly it grows is what's known as the growth rate or the the growth chance. So um, there is a base growth chance of two, uh, two point uh, zero, um, and uh, regardless of any of the uh, so, but then there will be some modifiers that, that happen on top of this base growth rate you know, that which may add additional uh, uh, an increased chance or may decrease its chance. So uh, the first one that affects it is whether the farmland that the, the stem or the, the crop is within um, is wet. Uh, and by wet, it needs to have a, a water source nearby uh, within four blocks of it. So it can be four blocks away. So this one is one, two, three blocks away. It could be there, um, and it could also be diagonally. It just has to be uh, four blocks away, so it could be diagonally in the way as well. Um, so it gets an extra two. So in this case, it would have a growth rate, uh, a growth chance of four. Uh, but there are other rules as well. So if there is adjacent farmland, it also gets the opportunity to increase the the chance. So uh, for dry farmland, it gets uh, 0.25 uh, additional growth. Um, and for wet farmland, um, it gets 0 uh, 0.75 for each uh, adjacent. So that's any of these, including the, the ones here as well. Um, obviously, they will turn back to, in the case of a stem, they will turn back to dirt uh, because the over time because the pumpkin will grow onto it. Uh, so, you know, in our case, we're only caring about the, di but about the diagonals, uh, but that increase, increases the chance as well. These two rules here, uh, are, they don't compound. So it's either the farmland is dry and it gets 0.25 or it's wet and it gets 0.75 for each adjacent one. So if we come down to the next one, uh, there, this is where the negative uh, growth rates come into it. So, uh, if the crop has the same crop um, on the adjacent column and row, so in this situation, uh, you know you can you could lie in rows this way, but because this one also has uh, sorry has a column this way, because it also has a row this way, um, it gets a negative uh, it gets a negative uh, of, of half the rate. Um, similarly, if it has the same crop diagonally, so there, on any of the four sides, it also gets half the rate. So, um, and these don't compound, so, um, it's, you know, in this one is only, you know, in this situation, it has been halved, it hasn't been, uh, it's not quarter the rate. Um, so... If you kind of put those different rules together, you'll be able to hopefully figure out the optimal layout for melons and pumpkins. Um, and so, if we, whoops, um, if we break this apart here, um, you'll be able to see it. So we have a, a checkerboard pattern like so um, with alternating rows. So uh, in this one, we've got the pumpkin in the middle, but all the stems on the outside are, are melons uh, stems. Um, and then, the, you know, the next row would be pumpkins. Um, and if you do the math, this adds up to a growth chance of 7.0. So what happens with this 7.0 chance? Well, it gets put into an algorithm. Um, so the chance of a, a growth on a random tick is 1 in 25 divided by the growth chance plus 1. So... Just to give you a couple of examples, so in this situation, this uh, this arrangement for this stem right here, if it was ticked, its chance of growth is one in four. So a quarter of the time, it will grow a pumpkin. Um, 
So then we have um, no no alternating uh, rows. So like if you have all pumpkins, you have it in this checkerboard pattern, but it's it's all pumpkins. Um, you'll get one in eight, so it'll actually be halved. Um, so that's why you know even with um, even if you only wanted to have pumpkins in your farm, you'd be better to still have melons in there because. Um, if you put pumpkins in there, it would be no different. You basically get exactly the amount, the same amount of output. Um, and the benefits are that you, in this situation, you just, you'd also get melons. Um, and the worst, uh, chance of growth, that, that is if you kind of look at it, all the negatives that could happen, um, what is the worst chance that could happen? Well, it's one in 23, um, is the worst chance, um, if you, if you kind of think of the pathological case there. So hopefully this uh, kind of explains how the growth rate works and, and why we've gone for this checkerboard pattern with the alternating rows. Um, so next we're going to, uh, I think we better get stuck into the build and uh, better start digging. And we're back. Uh, I've built up a couple of modules um, so far. I wanted to uh, make sure I had all the redstone right um, before I went ahead and built the rest of them. So I figured now would be a good chance to, to bring you back in and explain how it all works. Uh, so we're at the bottom here now. Um, items will uh, kind of go into this tube here um, fall down to the very bottom and then we have an item elevator that sends them back up. Um, the idea is that each, uh, uh, is that, uh, there's a module of four layers, uh, uh, well, four layers on the upper levels. There's only three on this. There's four layers of tracks where there's no, uh, cause there has to be an extra layer of tracks. So, there's three layers of pumpkins here, four layers of tracks, um, and I'm going to break up the, the farm into uh, blocks of four. Um, I should be able to add an, another three modules on top of this with all the room that we have down here, um, but I'll show you how it works. Um, so uh, if, we, if I send this off, you can see that... Uh, there's these detector rails on here, and the minecart. Whoa, bit of lag there. Um, I think it's. It, I think I don't think the server's lagging. I think it's my internet connection. Um, but yeah, so the the detector rails uh, are triggering the the pistons on the floor below, and then when the cart drops down, 
um, to the next layer, it picks up the layer above um, pumpkins and, and, and melons. So uh, we have to have an extra layer of, uh, of tracks, um, rails on the top, and then the bottom layer doesn't uh, trigger anything. Uh, this, it's just flat, um, flat rails, you know, no detecting the rails needed. Um, and yeah, so then then it comes it comes back up this track here, and then stops here, and then it'll dump out its uh, its melon and pumpkin. I, I'll take it, turn that off so we don't have to deal with the clicking, uh, and you'll see that they they all keep going up there. Um, so yeah, that's the general idea. Um, I think what I'm going to do now is going to go ahead and start to build the remaining three modules. Enjoy! And we're done. <laughs> well, not quite done, uh, but uh, but got all the the four modules, uh, th four layers each, um, done inside. Um, I've I've done a little bit of work between um, you know the, the time lapse in this. So I um I've put glass on the inside. Oh, just have a little just a little something to eat there. Um, <laughs> I put some glass to, to keep the uh, pumpkins and melons from flying out. I also put in a sorting system, so uh, didn't quite have enough room to put um, the, the filters, uh, kind of traditional filters in um, uh, for the items, uh, because it would have entered, ended up, if you, if you know, if you're familiar with Impulse's design, it, this block is normally there. Um, unfortunately, that would mean that this piston would get powered. Uh, so I kind of uh, made a makeshift design here, which is uh, two blocks wide, but uh, uh, and kind of snakes around to the side. Um, luckily, we don't have to have them uh, next to each other, uh, so I can I can fit two there, and I only have to sort uh, only have to sort the the melon. Uh, sorry, the pumpkins. Uh, the melons can just kind of flow into this side. And I uh, increased the, the amount of storage. Um, and I also switched them around. Originally, the melons were on this side. Um, I switched it around because uh, there will be less pumpkins. I figured uh, we'll filter out the pumpkins first. Um, yeah, that made sense to me somehow. Uh, so what do we have to do? What do we have to do to finish this off? So... Uh, each module is currently uh, separate at the moment. So the, the cart will start from up the top, it will kind of snake around each layer, falling down each layer, um, and then get to the bottom and, and go all the way back up. Um, 
So what I'm thinking is that I can connect each of the modules together. I can kind of chain them. So uh, we have detector rails here, um, for instance. Oh, well, hang on. So this layer here, apologies, this layer here is actually for the module below. The, the, the top module actually starts at the layer just up there. So if I, if I use a comparator, if I use a comparator here to detect off of that, let's just get a comparator. If I get a comparator here, I can, I can read that and I can then uh, use that signal to trigger this module down here. And then that way I only have to have a clock for the top, for the top layer. Uh, so I'll quickly just show you what I was thinking of how to do these. So put a block there, uh, sticky piston, uh, like that. We will need to replace these with, uh, I'll leave them blank for now. I'll get some glazed ter terracotta and put them there. Uh, oh, I'm missing a... Missing some of these guys. Need redstone block that will push down, and then we can take a re re repeater, 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 and finally a block. And that way, when that when that triggers, it will push this down. It will trigger this this repeater train there, and then tr trigger the next layer. Um, so, um, and apologies, I'm, I'm I appear to be dropping a few frames here. So sorry about that. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's kind of how I figured I'd do it. I'm I'm not I'm using repeaters here. Yeah, I could use redstone, um, but uh, but redstone dust can be quite laggy. So um, if I can use repeaters, I I will. There's uh, no problem there, and I'll add a little bit of a delay. Cool, so what I'll do is I'll add this module uh, onto the other layers and and then we'll figure out what we're gonna do for a clock. All right, I got a little bit carried away there and I ended up uh, uh, doing quite a bit. It's actually the next day I've, uh, I, I've had to do a bit of troubleshooting with the whole build. Um, I did decide on what clock to do. Uh, I ended up just going with an Etho Hopper clock um, I was I was originally going to try uh, one that was based on like um, a cactus grow growing or um, on saplings, um, using them as a timer as I, I have previously with this build. Um, I decided just to go with an Etho Hopper clock. We'll see how it goes. Um, it has uh, you can see I actually that would have triggered it just then. I actually have it switched off at the moment. Um, so that will all just drain to that side. I've got just under five stacks. Um, and we'll see if this number goes up. So, you know, if this, if we have four stacks and 38, if I come back later on and it ends up being higher, we know that something's going wrong and it's duplicating items. And, uh, yeah, we'll figure out what to do at that point if, if that happens. Um, but yeah, so I, I chained them all together, as I said, um, uh, you know, with uh, uh, with the piston and sticky pistons and and redstone block. Uh, sorry, the yep the the slime blocks and the sticky piston and the redstone block. Yeah, uh, put some uh, glazed terracotta in there so it slides past. Uh, and uh, yeah, I had to switch out a bit of the. Um, a bit of the stuff up here, some of the uh, the actual item filters. So, um, items are still coming up over here. Originally, I had a sorry. Let me just uh, I'll pillar up over here, and you can get a kind of longer view of it. Nope, oh, and I've pillared up at the wrong spot. I'll pull up pillar up here, <laughs> and you can get a better look of it at it. So yeah, the items uh, originally this was uh, this was just a, a hopper chain, um, 
unfortunately, the the hopper that was collecting them at the top was not fast enough. The the farm is was way too efficient, and it ended up uh, it ended up piling up a whole lot of uh, a whole lot of items up there, and they kept despawning. So I th thought about it, and I worked out that um, I could just use uh, water streams. Uh, let's see if I can. Yeah, I'll jump and put this in. Nope, that didn't make it. Let's see if I can try again. You can see that it uh, it rammed up against the, the the far side there. And if it if it ends up flowing in the middle of the water stream, it actually ends up getting caught in the in the hopper. So they would all kind of sink down into the hopper and get stuck. Um by making sure that there was a bit of a run up to it, a run up to the corner, it meant that it, it flew up against the wall and it sli slides across the edge of the the edge of the hopper. Uh, so it'll actually naturally just kind of flow down there. You don't need to. It doesn't seem like you have to have a um, uh, a chest or you know an ender chest to align it. So um, I had to do something similar at the bottom. Um, it had a very similar problem. Uh, items were dropping down from the, the four different modules too fast. Um, and the original system that I had uh, was, uh, was spitting out items at a rate where at a rate where it would, could keep up with like if the hoppers could keep up, it would keep up. Um, uh, but one single hopper couldn't keep up, so what I have now is, uh, let's see if I can show this off. So, uh, step back a bit. This now aligns, if I throw that in there, this now aligns with the, the ender chest there. So it's actually right on the edge of the, of the block here. And so when it lands here, it actually can go in either of these hoppers here. Um, and with two two hoppers lined up, sorry, <laughs> uh, I, I had to use pressure plates instead of slabs here as well, just so that they, they kept the water in, but uh, but the item can still flow a little bit further along. But yeah, so um, because it's right on the edge, it can go into either of those two hoppers, um, and they go both go into the same uh, the same dropper elevator, but it's using a uh, an observer clock, uh, which can f is incredibly fast. Uh, I think it's like a it's like a two tick uh, clock. So it will it stay it clicks on for one and then off for one and then on and yeah. So uh, that's that actually is able to keep up and it doesn't back up at that point. It just kind of keeps at a steady state. Um, and so it's able to, yeah, it's able to keep up with the items falling down. So that is it. That is it done. Um, I actually have been AFKing a little bit, like just to make sure that everything's like keeping up, that we don't have any items building up anywhere. Um, I don't. I really don't want to. Um, I, I want to avoid lagging out the server. So I didn't want any kind of items to be to be gathering at any. Oh, a little too early. Gathering any point. Um, so yeah, I just did a little bit of AFKing and then I'd come back and I'd check at each point, like if there was any items, uh, building up anywhere. Uh, but already, um, we have, we have quite a lot. Um, I've crafted a whole lot of melons. Uh, that was, that was pretty much all from the AFK. I only did about maybe two hours of AFKing all up. Uh, so I'd say that maybe like four of those were from previously. Um, and we have two double chests of pumpkins and starting the starts of the, the third. So not too bad, uh, considering I haven't really done a really heavy AFK session. Um, yeah, so we might need a, we might need to invest in a, in a larger storage for the melon slices as well, because, um, potentially even have three for melons uh, just because you get so many more melon slices and you have to craft them up which is not a problem but um, yeah you you, you don't want to have to 
you want to be able to AFK for, you know, a decent amount, a decent chunk of time. Ideally, you'll be able to AFK overnight. Uh, but yeah, so I think that that's, I think that's it. I think, uh, I think I'm done. I think that's it for, for today. Um, I, I'm not sure what I'm going to be working on next. Uh, so if, if anyone has any ideas, I'd, I'd love to, to hear it. Um, I still have my base to work on, my, my, uh, spawn, spawn house, um, to work on. Have to finish off that. We have the, uh, you know, we have a nether dig coming up, which, uh, uh, I hope to participate in soon. Um, but yeah, like lots, lots of stuff to work on. Lots of stuff on to work on. Um, but yeah, that's all I have. I'll catch you later. Bye.